Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily video update for March 7th, 2023. Well, on his way from Ukraine, where General Mark Milley, the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, was engaged in playing tabletop war games with Ukrainian generals, he went to Syria. He stopped in Syria to visit U.S. troops that are stationed in a portion of Syria where the U.S. is still deployed. There are supposedly 900 troops there. Milley was there to meet with them, inspect them, uh, and reaffirm the U.S. mission there. Now, the Syrians immediately denounced this, saying it's a violation of sovereignty, which it is. Why are there U.S. troops in Syria? And this brings up the question of an immediate urgent mobilization to support a resolution that was introduced by Congressman Matt Gates to remove U.S. troops from Syria. Gates has a resolution which is H. Con.res.21, which could be up for a vote as early as this Wednesday, that is tomorrow. And what the what Gates is uh, the resolution is to withdraw U.S. troops since there's no declaration of war. Why are we having troops in Syria in violation of that nation's sovereignty? Now, this is an, an urgent issue because the U.S. is the leading violator of sovereignty in the world. We talk about protecting Ukraine's sovereignty. What about Syria's sovereignty? What about the other countries where the U.S. is engaged in counterinsurgency and, and military operations? So the violation of the Constitution, which gives Congress the sole right to declare war, has gone on since 2000. Uh, three, really, and is part of an ongoing process of meddling throughout the world, but especially now it's increasing in Central Asia after the U.S. left, left Afghanistan. Uh, Blinken, in the last couple of days, the U.S. Secretary of State was in Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan. Uh, the U.S. is involved in a meeting in Pakistan to discuss countering terrorism there, especially along the Pakistan-Afghan border. But the Russian envoy in Afghanistan is accusing the U.S. of supporting the terrorists. What he's saying is that the continued holding of funds that belong to the Afghan government has weakened their capability to deploy the troops necessary to consolidate the security in the region and is allowing the free access of uh, uh, terrorists, including ISIS-related terrorists, who are engaged in raids into Pakistan. So what we see is a, a pattern of behavior of the United States in support of destabilization of governments which are not sufficiently committed to the unipolar order. And that, of course, is the, the reason we're at war with Ukraine, or on behalf of Ukraine against Russia. Now, Let's just take a quick look back to some events 20 years ago when the U.S. invaded Iraq uh, on March 20th, 2003, with a shock and awe bombing campaign. This had been in the works for some time. Of course, in 1991, George Bush Sr. had launched an invasion of Iraq over a uh, issue involving Kuwait, where the U.S. had actually given the Iraqis the go-ahead to go into the, to the contested oil fields on the Iraq-Kuwait border. But then Margaret Thatcher bragged that she stiffened Bush's spine to get him to be committed to Desert Storm, where the U.S. at one point had deployed almost 700,000 troops. Now, after that, the drumbeat against Saddam Hussein continued. And when George W. Bush became president, the planning immediately began to overthrow the Saddam Hussein government. And a task force was set up under Rumsfeld in November 2002. Uh, in September 2002, Bush went to the United Nations and described Iraq as part of the, quote, axis of evil, unquote, laying the groundwork for the United States to ask the UN to give it the permission to invade Iraq and overthrow Saddam Hussein. 
In October 2002, the U.S. Congress voted uh, for a, quote, Iraq resolution, unquote, which authorized the president to, quote, use any means possible, unquote, against Iraq. Now, what was the U.S. saying? What was the pretext for an attack on Iraq? Well, they claimed Iraq was tied to al-Qaeda and the, therefore to 9-11, when in fact Saddam Hussein had been fighting against al-Qaeda. And this charge of the U.S. government of Iraq-al-Qaeda ties was definitively refuted by the Pentagon and U.S. agencies after the war began. But before the war, the argument was that Iraq was part of the terror international. But more importantly, the U.S. claimed that Iraq was producing and stockpiling weapons of mass destruction. This was at the center of a February 5th, 2003, infamous Colin Powell speech before the U.N. Security Council, in, in which he laid out the claim that Iraq had ties with al-Qaeda and that Iraq was uh, preparing weapons of mass destruction. And this came from a dossier prepared by MI6. Sir Richard Deerloff delivered a dossier to the United States which claimed irrefutable evidence of Iraq's weapons of mass destruction. And this was then certified by George Tenet, at that time head of the US CIA. The source for this was an odd character whose uh, code name was Curveball. And he later admitted that all these claims he made were false. Uh, compare this with the Russiagate Steele dossier, which by the way, Steele was a protege of Sir Richard Dearloff. And so this trend of MI6 intervening in the United States to develop US foreign policy continues again till this present day. Now the UN wouldn't support the resolution for war, but the US and the British went ahead anyway. Uh, Bush set up what they called the Coalition of the Willing, at times, there were more than 200,000 troops between the U.S. and the British in Iraq. And what was the result? Well, Saddam Hussein was overthrown and he was later hanged. Uh, over one million Iraqis were killed between March 2003 and 2011. This was according to a survey that was reported on in Reuters. Uh, now, add to that the mid-1990s sanctions from the first Gulf War, where Lancet estimated that 567,000 Iraqi children died from lack of food and medicine. Now, the U.S. deaths in the Bush invasion of Iraq, this is the second Bush, were 4,487. 4, and between 2003 and 2011, over $800 billion was spent in Iraq. Now today, are there lessons from this? Well, one is we're still in Syria and use the link at the bottom of the description section to read up on this uh, HCON Res uh, 21 and take action on it. Call your congressman, demand that this be passed, that the United States cannot act as the policeman of the world. You know, the, this is the whole key to overturning the unipolar order, is having the population force the Congress to respond to the interests and needs of the American people, as opposed to the desires of the military industrial complex. Now, also, we need to overturn the sanctions against Syria, which are continuing to kill people in Syria by restricting needed humanitarian relief after the earthquake. So look, what, what's the point here? The U.S. has been an outlaw, even as it's asserting its role in defending a rules-based order. But these are violations of, of international law, what we're doing. And the fact that the U.S. is doing this with the British, with NATO, has been a pattern for at least since the end of the Cold War. And what else does this mean? Well, this defines the climate in which the U.S. felt it could, with impunity, blow up the Nord Stream pipelines, which was an attack on Russia, 
But it's also an attack on Germany and Europe by depriving the pipelines, by sabotaging the pipelines, it deprives the countries that were supposed to get cheap and plentiful Russian natural gas of a necessary energy source. This is an act of war. It's an act of terrorism. Now, this is why the American people must be brought into this battle. So take a look at the, the article that I'm going to be appending. There's a phone number there to call. Call your congressman and express your determination that we stop acting in this way in the world. And this would be a good first step toward avoiding a nuclear war over Ukraine and toward beginning the process of establishing a new security architecture for the world. So thanks for joining me. I'll be back again tomorrow. Hello, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Support our independence to produce videos like these. Become a member of the LaRouche organization at thelarouche.org slash member. By becoming a member for $25 or more, you'll get special access to the EIR Alert Daily Briefing and Weekly Magazine, which is what I read to stay on top of things.